Good morning. Our lecture for this morning would be fetal position and pelvimetry. So to know your fetal position and pelvimetry, we have to review our female pelvis. Our birth canal is divided into the bony and soft parts to bone, which belongs to the small pelvis and to the soft, the cervix, vagina, and your muscle facial system of your pelvic floor. The bony part of the pelvis um, with obstetric considerations are divided into two sections, the large and the small pelvis. The boundaries between them passes through an unmarked line, which is called your linea innominata. The large pelvis is bounded on the sides of the iliac wings. At the back is the spine. The small pelvis is formed in the front branches of the pubic bones. And the symphysis on each side, part bones, constitute acetabular and ischial bones behind is the sacrum and the coccyx. During childbirth, small pelvis as dense both tunnel limits and determines the size, shape, and direction of the birth canal which, fetus, which the fetus passes and has to adapt by changing their own configuration. Of all the methods of the pelvis examination, essential is measurement. Most internal pelvic sizes available for measurement so usually measured by its external dimensions and evaluate them about internally. Measurement of pelvic is penned by the pelvimeter. It's usually measured for basic dimensions of the pelvis, three transverse and one direct. The distantia spinarum is the distance between the upper anterior iliac spine bones this size is around 25 to 26 centimeters. Distantia cristarum is the distance between the most distant points of the wings. Iliac bone, on average, it is 28 centimeters. Your distantia trochanterica is the distance between the trochanter major of hip bones, and this is 31 centimeters in diameter on the average. Your external conjugate is the external size of the pelvis. And this is your end of your pelviometer, set on middle of the upper margin of symphysis. The other end is over the sacral fossa contained between the fifth lumbar vertebra and the beginning of the first sacral vertebra. Your external conjugate is 20 cm. In obstetric practice, these are the important dimensions of the pelvis from which depends on the course and outcome for both mother and fetus, but most sizes pelvis cannot be measured directly. Great pelvis for childbirth substantial does not matter when in its size may indirectly informate about the form and size of the pelvis. The pelvic cavity is the space between the walls, which the top and bottom limited inlet and outlet planes of the pelvis. It looks like a cylinder in pelvic cavity are four planes, the inlet, greatest dimension, narrow part, the milk pelvis, and outlet. The plane of the inlet of a small pelvis is bounded behind the promontory of the sacral bone laterally and the arcuate lines of the iliac bone anteriorly and upper margin of the pubic bone and symphysis. So your inlet is measured by reaching your sacral promontory, which would determine your conjugates. At the pelvic inlet, there are four sizes. It's your anterior, posterior, transverse, and two obliques. Direct size distance from sacral promontory to the point that most appear on the inner surface of the upper margin of the pubic synthesis is true or obstetric conjugate which is usually 11 cm away from the promontory to the middle of the upper part of synthesis anatomical conjugate. Dimensions plane of the pelvic inlet 
would be one is the anterior posterior size, two is the transverse size, three is left oblique, fourth is right oblique. The transverse size of the distance between the inimunata lines is 13 centimeters. Two obliques, which is the right and left, which is usually 12 centimeters. Your right oblique size goes from your right iliac sacral junction to the left eminentia iliopubis. Your left oblique size from the left iliosacral junction to the right eminentia iliopubis. The plane of the widest part of the pelvic cavity has the following limits. The front is a middle inner surface of the pubic synthesis. Laterally, your mid-acetabulum hollow, back the place 2 and 3 sacral vertebrae, direct and transverse dimensions of the plane are equal to 12.5 cm. The narrow part of the pelvic cavity is limited to the lower edge of the front pubic synthesis. Laterally is the ischial spine behind your sacrococcygeal joints. Direct size is 11 to 11.5 cm. Your transverse is 10.5 cm. The outlet has the following borders. Anterior lower margin of the pubic symphysis laterally your by tuberous diameter posteriorly and the tip of the coccyx Diagonal conjugate is measured during vaginal examination from the lower margin of pubis to the promontory. Normally, this distance is 12.5 to 13 centimeters for the determination of the real conjugate of bias should be deducted 1.5 to 2 centimeters. And that is your index soloviev. This is the average circumference of your wrist is 14 centimeters. Your rhombus of Michaelis, the upper angle contained hollow under the spinous processes of the five lumbar vertebra, and your lateral angles which correspond posterior superior iliac spine, lower top sacrum in women with normal pelvis, it has the correct form approaching the square. Its, its dimensions are 10 to 11 centimeters, height of the upper triangle is 3 to 3.5 centimeters. From all parts of the mature fetus, most interesting head because of the following reasons. The head has the biggest circumference and dense part of the fetus, which can withstand the greatest resistance from the birth canal and puts most pressure on them that determine the outcome of labor. Depending on the density and mobility of the cranial bones is greatly damaged. The birth canal of the mother and the fetus the head of the fetus has a large number of cognitive items which help in diagnosing insertion and promotion in the bones of the pelvis. At the head of the fetus can distinguish two parts, a relatively small front, lower jaw, maxilla, very voluminous brain. The latter consists of seven bones, two frontal, two parietal, one occipital, and two temporal. Sutures and frontal nodes of the skull of the newborn, seen from above. One is your frontal suture. Number two is your coronal suture. Three is your sagittal suture. Four is your occipital suture. Five is your small fontanel. Six is your large fontanel. All bony parts are interconnected fibrous membranes, allowing the process of childbirth cross bones going one after another, thus reducing the size of the head. These fibrous membrane called sutures, there are the following joints. Number one is your frontal sutura, or it is your sutura frontalis. Coronal suture, your sutura coronaria, connecting on each side of the frontal and parietal bones. And sagittal suture, combining two parietal bones, or your lambdoid occipital suture, or your sutura lambdoidea, connecting occipital bone with the parietal. Your temporal suture connects your each side of the parietal temporal and bone. So your fibrous membrane at the intersections of joints are called fontanelles. There are two main fontanelles and two pairs of secondary. The main fontanelles include large and small fontanelle. The large fontanelle is located at the intersection of coronary, windshield, and sagittal suture. 
and a diamond-shaped acute angle of the diamond sent to the forehead and back is easily determined by fingers. Small fontanelle is located at the intersection sagittal and occipital sutures. Unlike large and small fontanelle, poorly defined because it is already right, fetus field bone. At the head term, fetus can distinguish the following dimensions and perimeter. Vertical size, the distance from the hyoid bone to the middle of the large fontanelle, is equal to 9.5 cm on the contours of the head. Measured through these points, vertical size, and your large oblique size from the chin to the farthest point of the neck length, which is 13 cm from the perimeter and 41 cm in circumference. Direct size or your diameter front occipitalis from the nose to the occipital length is 12 cm by 34 cm contours of equal. Average oblique size from sub-occipital fossa to the anterior border of the scalp length is 10 cm and contours circumference is 33 cm. Small oblique size is from the middle suboccipital fossa, large fontanelle, length is 9.5 cm, and circumference is 32 cm. Your small transverse size diameter is the distance between the most distant points of the coronal suture, which is 8 cm, and your large transverse size diameter by parietalis is the distance between the parietal bones length is 9.5 cm. The circumferences of shoulders is usually 34 cm with a circumference of the pelvic part 28 cm. For the transverse size of the buttocks length and 9.5 cm in perimeter is an incomplete presentation of buttocks with foot foot previa 28 cm with full presentation it's 34 cm. The contours of a newborn body in full foot presentation, shoulder with handles, is 34 cm. If it's buttocks, it's 28. Contours of the newborn baby in complete breech presentation, shoulder is 34 with buttocks with legs, 34 cm. So definitions of your fetal line, position, and view is presentation should have an accurate knowledge of the position of the fetus in the uterus is great importance for practical obstetrics. It is achieved by the examination of women in late pregnancy when you can set fetus habitus, lie, presentation, position, and variety. The attitude of the fetus is the ratio of the limbs of the fetus and the head to his body in the most favorable habitus. It is in a curved spine resulting in the back arch upwards, head bent, chin close to the chest, flexed legs at the hip and knee joints. They intersect and pin to the lower abdomen, handles are flexed at the elbows and intersect on his chest. So your fetal lie is the ratio of the axis of the fetus to the axis of the uterus. The axis of the fetus is a line that passes through the neck and buttocks can meet the following options for the fetal lie. Your fetal axis coincides with the uterus longitudinal lie, occurs in 99% of cases. This is your cephalic presentation. Your fetal axis intersects the uterus transverse or situs transversus or oblique fetal lie, 1%. Position of the fetus is the ratio of the fetal back to the left, two-thirds of the time, or to the right, one-third of cases. The uterine wall in transverse position of the fetus position is determined by the placement of the head. Type of position, the ratio of the fetus back to the front or back wall of the uterus. In the front form of the back of the uterus is facing the front wall of the uterus at the back of the form to the back wall of the uterus. Fetal presentation is the ratio of the lowest placed large part of the fetus to enter the pelvis, main or bridge. So your station, two would be fixed to the pelvic inlet, 
minus 1 would be small segment of the fetal head in the pelvic inlet. Your station 0 would be a large segment of fetal head in the pelvic inlet or at the level of the sin. Uh, aces, anterior, anterior superior iliac spines, plus 1, plus 2, and plus 3 as mentioned. In other cases, uh, now it is up to minus 5 and plus 5. How do we examine anamnesis in women? So when taking history, clarify the following issues. Of course, general data, family history, Diseases in childhood, in adulthood, in pregnancy, working and living conditions, menstrual, sexual, reproductive, and secretory functional history, and the occurrence of pregnancy. So during the general examination, pay attention to height, body structure, completeness, condition of skin, shape of the abdomen, breast and nipples, and so your external measurement in order to have an idea about the size of the fetus, we measure the size of the abdomen with a measuring tape in the supine position at the navel at the end of pregnancy. This woman is 110 centimeters and the height of the uterus is around 37 to determine the mass of fetal abdominal perimeter multiplied by the height of the standing uterus. So this is your lupal maneuver or your lupal Levitsky maneuver. This sits to the right of the pregnant woman facing her palmar surface on the hand. Place your fundus on the uterus is trying to bring together the phalanges. This reception determines the height of standing and forms the uterus, the part of the fundus. The second would be palpating the maternal sides. So you check for the fetal back and for the fetal limbs. The fetal back would be the one where your fetal heart bones would lie. So the third would be your polyx grip which is confirmatory of your first fundal grip. Your fourth external method is performed as follows. Your obstetrician would stand facing legs, bent at the knees, pregnant tips and palmar surface and you place your hands like so in the fourth figure. Goes between her and the plane door in a small bowl and returns back up, checking the results. If it's transverse, the fetus part on the public joints will not be palpable and fingers would freely agree among themselves. When it's cephalic, this method allows you to determine the place of accommodation. Parts of the entrance of the small pelvis the fingers of both hands would freely converge under it and when returning back. So your vaginal examination is required in the following cases. The first at the time of admission of when you know that it's pregnant, second after discharge of amniotic fluid or early labor activity, and the third when your obstetric situation is going into second stage of labor. This would provide information of the status of the genital tract before birth. Therefore, you would know the deformities, bone tumors, form of the pelvis, and opening of the cervix after the membranes have been ruptured. So this is how we estimate the diagonal conjugate by internal examination. So we try to reach for the sake of promontory. Ultrasound dating of the pregnancy and an ultrasonic fetal survey to detect gross abnormalities have been recommended in some clinics as routine of early prenatal care. So it's effective in patients in whom the date of the last menstrual period is uncertain and in patients with a family history of congenital anomalies. Considerable individualization should be exercised in making the decision to order this evaluation. If ultrasonography is performed, it is most informative between 11 to 13 and 8 to 20 weeks. Of course, we have to auscultate, cephalic presentation, maximal intensity of fetal heart sounds is usually midway between the maternal umbilicus and the entire superior spine of her ilium. 17 weeks 
your fetal heart tones could be heard as early as 17 weeks in multiparas in the trained ear. Uh, 22 weeks would be a 100% chance of hearing the fetal heart tones even into a trained ear. So, your clinical pelvimetry parameters would be the following. The inlet would have one. You have to measure your sacral promontory. Midplane has four. You have to measure your sacral curvature. It should be wide and hollow. Pelvic side wall should not be convergent. It should be parallel. It should not be parallel. Interspenous diameter should be more than 13 centimeters. Sacrosciatic notch should admit more than two. One to two finger beds. Your outlet has three parameters. It has to have a movable coccyx. Your suprapubic angle should be more than 90 degrees. And your bituberous diameter should accommodate a fist or at least 8 centimeters. So this is your pelvic inlet. So it is formed by your promontory. Measured by uh, your internal. And your midplane, again, your sacral curvature should be wide and hollow, interspenous diameter. Your side walls should not should be uh, not convergent. Your sacral sciatic notch would admit one to two finger beds. And your outlet should have your more than 90 degree suprapubic arch. By tuberous diameter more than 8 centimeters or admit a fist. And your coccyx should be movable. Okay. This ends our lecture for your fetal pelvis and clinical pelvimetry. I would also uh, share a clinical pelvimetry video in um, in my channel. Please view it um, for a more informative video on clinical pelvimetry. Thank you.